Striking an arc is by far the hardest part about stick welding. Once you've mastered that, you're set. One of the best things you can go out and do is practice. So I keep whatever scrap material I can. Uh, I keep everything from old edger blades because, hey, this is a perfect eighth inch um, piece of metal right there. Put a couple of those together, do some fillet welds. You know, I get some longer ones to actually lay down some longer beads and to actually practice my the bead technique or pattern. Um, also practice my how straight I can get it, you know. <laughs> We're not going to pull out a protractor on that one. Or you got this guy and yep, well, those are some pretty ugly beads on there and that's okay because this is my striking piece, I guess you can call it. Uh, this is what I use to strike an arc and so there are tons of starts and stops. There's huge divots and gaps and that's fine. I don't care. I'm not even ever going to grind it down. I'll probably just keep going uh, because all I'm doing is practicing striking the arc. Yes, it does help to have a really nice machine. But uh, nine day difference between this guy and, you know, the cheap bottom of the line Amazon $80 cinder welder. By all means, if you've got the funds or the needs to actually go get a nicer stick welder, yeah, sure, go do it. But that's not a necessity. I've started out in my garage, still in my garage, with, you know, the Harbor Freight cheap welders. It's kind of before Amazon came about. I still have a lot of cheap welders and I really actually kind of like messing around with them because first of all, it kind of amazes me that they can throw out a cheap welder, you know, less than a hundred bucks that can throw down, you know, do some quarter inch material. The only drawback to these guys is, well, you can't trust the amperage. And the amperage is one of the biggest factors in actually striking an arc. I think it's probably one of the biggest problems that people have off the bat is their amperage is incorrect. So, well, let me just give you an example. This 3 32nd inch rod typically takes an amperage of anywhere between 75 and 120 amps, give or take. So I know when I put this, uh, my Miller on 80 amps, I'm getting pretty dang close to that 80 amps and it kind of proves it. I can strike an arc, weld beautifully and easily. Whereas when I first picked up this guy, I put it right at about 80 amps, nothing. Turned it up a little more. Nah, I got some sparks, but that was about it. Turned it up even more. I think I turned it up to about 120, and that's when I was able to finally get a strike and lay down a bead. So, nothing wrong with that. You just know you're messing with the settings, and the amperage is really just kind of a gauge, um, not necessarily a true amperage output. So really, in the end, if you're just kind of on the fence, I'd actually say go pick up one or two of these cheap machines because if you can do it with this guy, you can do it with anything. Now, actually striking the arc is exactly as it says. You're striking the arc. You have to contact the tip or the rod to the workpiece. You got to make that connection for that flow of electricity. So you'll see in almost all of my videos that I actually hold it right in the middle. It's really just for stability to keep the end stable. And then I go and drag or drag along the rod and do my weld. I've helped out a couple buddies that say, I can start an arc with a new rod easily every time, but I can never do it when the rod's been used. And so, well, usually I just teach them this little thing and it's a game changer. As you stop the arc, you'll notice that sometimes the rod gets sucked into the flux a little bit. Sometimes there's even some solidified flux around the tip of it. And well, as you can imagine, that takes away your, uh, your path of electricity. So you gotta either chip that away, file it away, or really just tap it away. Most times you can just tap it on your workpiece with a good little taparoo, and it will knock off that little uh, slag on the top and you're good to go again. It really is that simple. Go pick up a really cheap machine. I'll have a link to a couple different ones that I've actually had and used in the description below. And pick up some metal and start practicing. That's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.